I'm a scientist. I, you know, I'm very skeptical with pretty much everything. And, uh, and so I, I really had thought that this wasn't going to work at all. And we tried it on a nurse, and I, j and I had to take the measurement several times after that because I just could not believe that her, her peripheral circulation increased by 100%, so it doubled. Let's, again, still being skeptical, let's design a clinical trial and we'll look and see how it affects people. She was healthy, but let's see how it affects both healthy patients uh, and, uh, and people with diabetes. You can't increase the circulation everywhere in the body because you only have so much circulation. You have to move it from one place in the body to the next. And, and so what, what this therapy does is it probably moves, the, shunts the circulation to peripherally. And, and it moves it, and peripherally could be the skin, which is your largest organ, as he was saying. And it probably reduces the circulation to your gut and then improves it in the, in the other parts of your body. Uh, and, and certainly people have claim that they've had um, you know, better thinking afterwards and, and better ability to concentrate and more energy. So it probably does increase some of the circulation in the brain. It confuses your body so much because when you have a high, a high concentration of CO2 in your skin, you, that's sending signals back saying, you know what, I'm not getting enough oxygen. You know, if you get a, high bunch, a lot of CO2 coming in, in, your, in your finger, that's saying I'm not getting enough oxygen. Your CO2 receptors really are, are, are peripheral. I'm not getting enough oxygen. I need more circulation to be able to get this. Now your body can't just give you circulation in one finger. It's got to, it actually in, in, increases circulation everywhere. So in all of your, in, peripherally, in your digits and in your skin. And so I think that's what happens. That's why putting it on your thumb is going to increase the circulation in your toes. And we're measuring in a toe, but, uh, but you know, applying on a thumb. So this is how we measure the effect of, of deoxiva. And this is a blood pressure test. That's all it is. But it's measuring the blood pressure of the capillaries, okay, the little tiny vessels in the tissue. And so we use a laser signal, it's just a light signal, and our laser cables have uh, three uh, fiber optic cables, uh, one sending and two receiving, and what they do is they bounce uh, a light off the red blood cells and they're looking for movement. Are those, cap are those capillaries flowing through that tissue? And then uh, it, it, it uh, measures the Doppler effect, right? The you know, Doppler from, you know, Doppler weather and et cetera, but Doppler is just movement. So then we put a cuff over that laser probe and we inflate the cuff to the point where we've stopped the blood flow. And our device detects the fact that that blood flow in that tissue area has been stopped. And then we release the cuff pressure gradually and our laser is constantly sending a signal down and looking to see when do those blood cells start to move again. And you can kind of intuitively, more robust pulsating blood flow to the extremities uh, would be able to uh, return while there's more cuff pressure, right? Uh, and uh, poor uh, diminished perfusion, the cuff pressure would have to be much less before that perfusion returned, right? It's showing much less blood flow. So lower values are bad, right? Uh, really low values. We know there's just not enough blood getting to that extremity for uh, good things to happen. So we just completed uh, two skin perfusion pressure tests, uh, two on each limb. Uh, before and after therapy and uh, measured the point in which perfusion refer, uh, returned to the tissue. Testing was done at the same location and the, on the uh, right limb the baseline measure was 102 millimeters of mercury of cuff pressure at which time blood flow returned. That's what we call skin perfusion pressure and that increased to 137 millimeters of mercury meaning there was increased perfusion. On the left limb uh, the baseline was 74 millimeters of mercury of uh, skin perfusion pressure and that increased to 80 millimeters of mercury, both indicating that there was additional or increased perfusion pre and post therapy. There's a lot of possibilities here and, and we're really excited about the future of what this could provide to people with microvascular disease.